Hi, my name's Heather. I'm a dietitian and I work for the Vegan Society. We're a charity based in Birmingham. We are the oldest vegan organisation in the world because our founders coined the term veganism and we work to support people to go vegan and stay vegan. This will just be a short session, busting some myths around vegan nutrition and providing a few tips about how to get the most out of your vegan diet. So the first myth we're looking at is that it's difficult to get protein from plants. So you hear a lot of people talking about uh, protein in our diets um, and some people have concerns that you can't get enough protein from a vegan diet. Um, so actually plant protein can provide all the building blocks that our bodies need. And there are really three boxes that you need to tick to be able to get enough protein. So you need to have adequate calories which means that you need enough fuel in your diet to be able to maintain a healthy weight and um, it's important to have a varied diet as well and it's also important to have a balanced diet so make sure that your meals include sources of good quality plant proteins so legumes which are beans peas and lentils um, these foods are superstars of vegan nutrition they're a good source of protein they can also count towards one of your five a day and um, so they're really good foods to to eat um, at least once a day maybe twice a day um, also tofu a soy based product um, contains high quality protein and certain nuts and seeds are also good sources of protein including cashew nuts and pumpkin seeds um, and also peanut butter and peanuts can provide some good quality protein as well so myth two is that you have to get omega-3 fat from oily fish. So there are a lot of people um, who either don't like eating oily fish or they choose not to, uh, like vegans. And it's important to look for other sources of this particular type of fat. So you can balance your daily diet by including a really rich source of omega-3 fat, such as walnuts or ground linseed or flaxseed, as it's as it's also known, chia seeds or hemp seeds. And to give you an idea of quantities, that might be um, sort of having a tablespoon of ground linseed in some yogurt alternative or on your cereal in the morning, and that would provide you with a good baseline amount of omega-3 fats. Um, it is possible to take a vegan supplement that provides the long chain omega-3 fats EPA and DHA that are found in oily fish, um, although this isn't thought to be essential for vegan health. So myth three is that you can't absorb iron from plant foods. So um, iron deficiency is a, a big issue worldwide um, for people eating a variety of different diets. And uh, so it is something that everyone needs to think about. And um, obviously most of us um, get the bulk of our nutrition from plant-based foods so it's particularly important to know which foods contain good amounts of iron so often this mineral is found in the protein rich foods that we looked at earlier um, including your beans peas and lentils um, also whole grains can be a really really useful source of iron as well um, and certain um, dried fruit like dried apricots um, and dried figs um, and also certain green leafy greens as well like kale and um, you can boost iron absorption by eating it with a source of vitamin c so that's a really good tip for meal time so you might do tofu stir fry with broccoli or throw some bell pepper into a chili um, or finish off your meal with some strawberries for dessert for example Myth four is that you can't get enough calcium without dairy. Um, so the UK's Eat Well Guide, which is a, a sort of healthy eating tool for the UK, actually recognises the role of fortified dairy alternatives. And if you swap from cow's milk to fortified plant milk, um, you can maintain your calcium intake um, because they're fortif fortified to contain a similar level of calcium. Um, so that can be a really valuable um, a tip for people who are transitioning from a diet that contains dairy to a vegan diet. You sometimes hear people promoting greens as a source of calcium and, and certainly they can provide useful amounts of well-absorbed calcium. Um, however, the amounts um, per serving tend to be 
a lot lower um, than, for example, fortified alternatives to milk and dairy. Um, so this list just shows you um, how much of these particular vegetables you'd have to eat um, to consume half of the daily calcium target for adults in the UK. So as you can see, um, it's quite a lot if you work it out. Um, so really it's important to try and look for um, sources that provide a higher amount per serving. Um, so having um, some plant milk um, or some uh, fortified uh, yogurt alternative, um, calcium set tofu, and that can be really helpful. Um, there are also certain types of breads that contain extra calcium. Um, so there's a soy and linseed variety um, that, that can make a useful contribution towards your daily calcium target. Um, so I'd suggest eating these type of foods a couple of times daily to make sure that you're well on your way to hitting your target. So the sixth myth is that plant foods are a source of B12 or plants produce B12. Um, so there are a lot of claims out there um, that certain um, whole, whole food, um, whole plant foods can provide B12. Um, but it's important to be suspicious of, of any kind of claims that um, B12 comes from plants um, because all B12 um, actually comes from microorganisms. Um, so it's really important that vegans rely on safe sources of B12 um, and these are foods that are fortified um, or a supplement that contains B12 and you can have a look at our full recommendations around this particular vitamin um, on our website. Miss seven is that only vegans need supplements um, so fortified foods and supplements um, represent a really useful way of of supporting lots of of different people um, to hit their nutrient targets um, so I've just listed a few examples here in the UK um, so vitamin D drops are recommended from birth for breastfed babies um, and supplementation of vitamins A and C is also recommended as a nutritional safety net for under fives um, there's also a recommendation around vitamin D supplementation for everyone in the UK age five and over from October to March as a minimum. And for some groups, it's recommended um, that they use a supplement year round. Um, and there's also a recommendation for folic acid supplementation um, during pregnancy planning and during the first trimester. So those are a few examples of how supplements can help lots of different groups of people to meet their nutritional needs. So myth eight is that soya is unsafe. Um, so um, there is a lot of debate um, around the safety of soya, um, but soy-based foods can be safely consumed as part of a balanced diet. Um, and they can be a really useful source of nutrition for people eating a vegan diet um, for, the, uh, for, for their protein content um, as well as other nutrients and particularly for people with relatively high protein needs. So um, athletic individuals and also older adults. So there is a recommendation that people who are age 65 or over um, just get a bit of extra protein into their daily diet to support muscle health. Um, there's a really good fact sheet produced by my professional body, the British Dietetic Association, um, that's available online. So if you have any concerns around this particular food, I'd recommend checking that one out. Myth nine is that vegan diets aren't suitable for children. So we work with the British Dietetic Association to share the message that well-planned vegan diets can support healthy living in people of all ages. So if you plan carefully, you can provide all the nutrients that are needed for, for growth and development. And the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics shares a similar message. Myth 10 is that athletes can't thrive on vegan diets. So there are lots of great examples of elite athletes who are thriving on vegan diets. Um, obviously, nutrition is a key part of maximizing performance. Um, and there are uh, higher protein targets for people who are athletic, but these can be met by eating um, plenty of good sources, uh, plant-based sources across the day. Um, soya and split pea milk um, can be useful for people who are athletic due to their higher protein content. 
Um, and some people who are athletic, they need a lot of fuel, but um, not everyone has a, a big appetite. So um, using foods like soya, vegan corn, seitan, nut and seed butters, um, and white pasta and rice can be really useful um, if you need to get the, the fuel in, but you need a, a less bulky diet. So now that we've looked at a few myths around vegan diets, I'm going to finish off with a few tips about how to get the most out of, out of a vegan diet. So this is the Vegan Eat Well guide. It's available on our website. Um, it's just basically helping you to get started with um, reviewing your diet. So having a look at the main food groups um, with sort of uh, a few extra tips for people who are vegan. And um, there are also some sustainability tips on our website as well in the full version. Um, so you've obviously got your two biggest food groups. So um, in terms of fruit and vegetables, we've also, we've already mentioned the importance, uh, we've already looked at the importance of including sources of vitamin C in your meals. Um, it's also good to know where um, vitamin A comes from in vegan diets in the form of carotenoids and vitamin K. So I'd recommend checking out um, the nutrient pages on our website for more information. Um, in terms of starchy food, it's good for everyone to, to try to go for the whole grain and higher fiber choices, um, the, the more nutritious choices and help you to, to get enough fiber into your diet. Um, in terms of the other food groups, so we've, we've already looked at protein. Um, so um, the Eat Well Guide, the standard Eat Well Guide actually um, says that everyone should eat more beans um, and pulses so um, people eating a balanced vegan diet are often ahead of the game because uh, beans peas and lentils um, are a core part of their diet um, you've also got the calcium rich foods group um, so as i said earlier if you eat a couple of portions of these really rich sources of calcium daily you'll be well on your way to hitting your calcium targets so that's your fortified alternatives to dairy calcium set tofu um, and also for example soya and linseed bread fortified with extra calcium so those are a few of the considerations around balanced vegan diets um, and you'll notice that there are um, a couple of extra boxes so um, the one, one of the boxes on the left draws your attention to omega-3 fat. So as we've mentioned, it's really important to get a rich source of that into your daily diet, like walnuts or ground linseed. Um, and also um, your attention is drawn to a few other nutrients that deserve special attention. And this brings me on to the topic of supplementation. Um, so we've also already touched on it, but um, it is aware, good to be aware of general recommendations around supplementation um, for people in the UK, um, including vitamin D. Um, and then in terms of the vegan specific stuff, as we've mentioned, you need to make sure that you're getting enough B12 from fortified foods or a supplement. Um, it's also really important to ensure that you've got a reliable source of iodine in your diet. So a supplement's a good bet, or if you're drinking, um, say around, uh, 500 uh, milliliters of fortified plant milk daily that could be a really good source of iodine for you if you're choosing a product with added added iodine um, selenium is a mineral um, that can be topped up in your diet um, by a supplement and that's a, a reliable way of guaranteeing that you're getting enough every day um, and as i said earlier you can choose to take a supplement with the long chain omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA. Um, and it's, it's not thought to be essential for vegan health, um, but it might be a more important consideration during pregnancy, breastfeeding and childhood due to the role of these fats in brain, nerve and eye development. So that's one thing to consider for some people. So just to summarize, in order to get the most out of your vegan diet, um, Choose a rainbow, rainbow of fruit and vegetables. Um, make sure that you're going for some whole grain, higher fiber, starchy food choices. Include good sources of protein in your meals. Um, and remember to uh, include those B12 
beans, peas and lentils in your diet to get the most out of your vegan diet. Uh, make sure that your daily diet features a really rich source of omega-3 fat like walnuts. Uh, make sure you're getting at least a couple of portions of calcium rich food daily like fortified foods or calcium set tofu. Uh, make sure you're following UK guidance around vitamin D supplementation and also check that you're getting a reliable source of vitamin B12, iodine and selenium into your diet as well. So we have a campaign at the Vegan Society called Vegan and Thriving um, and for this campaign we came up with some recipes um, that are balanced and provide at least two of your five a day and they have a few useful tags on them as well um, for example recipes that are particularly rich in calcium, um, recipes that are handy for uh, batch cooking um, and it can be a really useful um, area of the website to check out if you're doing some meal planning for the week and um, lots of recipes uh, from breakfast to evening meal. So if you need more information about vegan diets um, check out the resources at vegansociety.com forward slash nutrition. Um, also you can check out the resources that are connected with our vegan and thriving campaign at vegansociety.com forward slash thriving so that's the vegan eat well guide and the thriving recipes and also you might like to try using our free v nutrition app which will help you to get started with um, checking your vegan diet and seeing if you're getting the most out of it <laughs>